Hey guys, I'm back with a demo of my project. This is using the Thing development board from SparkFun. So I have my my Thing development board here soldered into a little interface board that I made. And then connecting to the interface board are four, uh, these are water float sensors or switches. They're just uh, when the when the sensor is open like this, there there would be no water, and then when the water makes this float go up, it closes the switch. So that's the way that works. Uh, you can I drew a little schematic here. Um, so these four sensors are connected to pull up inputs on the thing. And then over on the left of the diagram is basically my little interface board that I made. Uh, so I just made a little push button where you can apply the 3.3 volts across uh, the LEDs and then through these switches. This is for, for diagnostics when the thing is sleeping. Most of the time the thing will be sleeping. Um, if you can see, there's a blue LED that's flashing once in a while. This is when it's waking up from a sleep, and then the rest of the time it's sleeping. Um, so the reason um, that it's kind of doing short sleeps and then waking up is because um, just for debugging, I have it set to sleep for two seconds. Um, and do that 12 times. Um, and then once it reaches 12 times, it will post a data point to the cloud. I'm using a service called ThingSpeak. This is by MathWorks. So if you can see on my screen here, well, I have two things open. I have a serial debug monitor on the right using the Arduino IDE that I use for programming the board. And then on the left is uh, the ThingSpeak data channel. So you can see there's points being uh, being sent to ThingSpeak. Right now it's leading, it's reading uh, water level four because all four of the all four of the switches are closed. You can see that on my LEDs there. Um, so if I open up one of these switches here. So now we should have just three LEDs on. And when this thing gets ready, when it reaches its 12th sleep cycle, now it's going to post uh, three to thing speak. So it says it read the water level as three. And there you can see on the graph, there's three. I'll make it two, should be two, let's see. So the reason um, that it's doing these short sleeps is because I only want to post data to the cloud every 12 hours probably when it's in production. Um, but the chip is only able to sleep for I think like 71 minutes. Um, this is because your sleep is specified in microseconds and you only have 32 bits to put in the value for how long you want to sleep. So my plan is just to sleep for one hour and then wake up, check the EEPROM uh, for my sleep counter. If it's not time to send data yet, just go back to sleep. If it is time to send data, then you take your reading and send it to the cloud. So it's um, got a, an address in the EEPROM where it's uh, incrementing each time it wakes up and uh, it's keeping track of how many sleeps it's done so far. Uh, you see it sent another value of 2 to the cloud. I'm going to change it now to, to 1. Should be 1 if we, we check our diagnostic board here. Yes. So 
and it said it read level one. There's the one on the graph. I'll make it zero. Um, so all this um, development board is doing is sending the data to the ThinkSpeak Cloud. And then from there, any notifications or anything like that, I will do through ThingSpeak itself. I know you're able to make it send out tweets when certain conditions are met, or you can also use the another cloud service called If This Then That. You can, uh, I think with that, you can install an app on your phone and get push notifications from the cloud. Uh, so basically, you get things speak to to send some data over to if that if this then that saying that a certain condition has occurred and then the notification can come to your phone or whatever, or like I said, you can tweet directly from things speak. So that's the plan, and it seems to be working. So with this, you're able to monitor a water level remotely. My plan uh, here is, right now it's just uh, powered off the USB coming from my computer. I soldered on a power wire here. This is going to be connected to some batteries, and I also have a solar panel that's going to be charging the batteries. So this will be a kind of standalone remote sensing application.